So everybody's getting their brand new iPhone 15 Pros and you're stuck with the year old 12 Pro and you're wondering if you should upgrade, if it's worth it. And in this video, we're going to be comparing the iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro. I wanna take a look at everything that's different with the design, the cameras, the displays and more. And I will tell you if I think it's worth the upgrade. There are similarities and differences between these two Pro iPhones. So let's just start with the most obvious difference and that is the design. And there are a number of differences between the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro in the design category. Starting off with the iPhone 12 Pro, the iPhone 12 Pro was the first of the newer generation of iPhones to come with the flat and sharp edges like you can see right here. On the Pro models, we do have this shiny stainless steel, which is both elegant and, well, heavy. And that has led to a lot of people complaining about how the iPhone just feels in the hand. It's heavy, it's sharp, it's uncomfortable to hold, blah, 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 blah. I never really had much of an issue with it. However, with the iPhone 15 Pro, Apple has moved this year to titanium, which gives you a slightly more matte or brushed finish with the titanium with rounded edges, which absolutely does make it more comfortable to hold in the hand. So between the weight reduction of going with titanium and the smoothness of the edges, it definitely just all around feels better. And on the back of these devices, they both have the same frosted glass look. The iPhone 12 Pro is white, and this is also the white titanium iPhone 15 Pro. Both of these devices have three cameras on the back. They both have a main camera, a wide angle, and a zoom lens, and we'll talk more about those in just a moment. And when it comes to physical size, the iPhone 15 Pro is ever so slightly smaller or shorter than the 12 Pro, and it's just slightly narrower as well. And I did mention that titanium is lighter, and it is actually lighter, it feels a lot lighter, but in reality, it's only 0.06 grams less weight than the iPhone 12 Pro, so they weigh practically the same. On the right side of both phones, we do have that sleep-wake switch, and here you can probably see the fingerprint magnet that the stainless steel is. Now, there are fingerprints that do show up on the titanium as well, but they're definitely less noticeable because of, well, just the matte finish of it. But if fingerprints on the shiny stainless steel of the 12 Pro has been bothering you, then the more matte finish of the titanium is gonna feel pretty good. On the left side of both phones, we do have the volume buttons for up and down, and on the 12 Pro, we do have that standard toggle for the mute switch, which we've had since the original iPhone. And down here, you can also see that we have a physical SIM card slot on the 12 Pro, which we do not have on the 15 Pro. With the 15 Pro, again, you do get the two volume buttons. You do not get a physical SIM card tray, but you do get that brand new action button. That new action button can be defined to do basically whatever you want. You can have it set to predefined options like the flashlight or opening the camera or whatever, but you can also set it to opening a shortcut, which can do basically almost anything on the iPhone or even outside the iPhone, or it can open up apps or all kinds of different things. This is a super customizable button that a lot of people are really enjoying. Right now, for me, I'm using it as the camera button. I press and hold and I get straight to the camera. And moving to the bottom, on the iPhone 12 Pro, we do have that standard lightning port that we've had for the last 10 years. And on the iPhone 15 Pro, we do have USB-C. So overall, the exterior design of these two iPhones is very similar you can tell that they're both iPhones. And yeah, there are some refinements, but after three years, the iPhone 15 Pro still looks a lot like the iPhone 12 Pro, just a bit more refined. The iPhone 15 Pro, of course, has that new material on the outside and this slightly rounded edges, just making it a slightly better external design than what you get with the iPhone 12 Pro. One of these looks like jewelry and one of these looks like a refined tool. And with either one, you can't really go wrong. And you definitely wanna keep them looking as good as possible. And that's where today's sponsor, Pataka, comes in. This is the Mag Easy 4 and the Mag Easy 4 Pro case from Pataka. Both of these cases are made of aramid fibers, like what's used in aerospace, and woven together to make a case that's both five times stronger and five times lighter than steel. The Mag Easy 4 case is the thinnest and lightest MagSafe compatible aramid fiber case for iPhone. This Mag Easy case is perfect for someone who wants a case that is as light and thin as possible, but provides scratch and ding protection without getting in the way. Plus, there's a built-in metal lip on the back to help protect the camera. And with the Mag Easy 4, you can appreciate the titanium frame of the new iPhone 15 with the cutouts. With the Mag Easy 4 Pro, you get even more protection with the blending of aramid fiber and TPU for a case that is both durable and slim. I really like the metal buttons on the Mag Easy 4 Pro case, and the lip on the front helps protect the display. Both of these cases have a smooth, chamfered back edge, which feels great to wrap your hand around. And both have an NFC chip inside that you can scan to verify authenticity or to get things like wallpapers from Pataka. With the Mag Easy 4 and the Mag Easy 4 Pro, you get to choose between a minimalist, thin and light case with a great design or 
go with something with a little bit more protection for your new iPhone 15 or 15 Pro. Both of these cases come in a few color options, and if you want to pick up one of these MagEZ cases, check out the links in the description below, and my thanks to Pataka for sponsoring this video. Both of these displays are 6.1 inch, 460 pixels per inch OLED display with a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. When it comes to brightness, the iPhone 12 Pro can get up to 800 nits in regular everyday brightness, and the iPhone 15 Pro can get up to 1000 nits in regular everyday brightness, which is plenty bright for just about anything you do indoors in most lighting situations. However, when viewing outdoors in direct sunlight or extremely bright situations, the iPhone 15 Pro can get up to 2000 nits compared to just the 1000 nits of the iPhone 12 Pro. And watching HDR content, the iPhone 15 Pro again edges out the 12 Pro, getting up to 1600 nits of HDR viewing brightness compared to 1200 nits on the iPhone 12 Pro. It's so hard to complain about either one of these devices. They both look amazing in regular everyday use and for content viewing. The iPhone 15 Pro also has that ProMotion technology that allows the display to ramp up dynamically up to 120 hertz all the way down to something like 10 hertz for a better viewing experience. So you get really fast scrolling and when you're watching video, you can actually get the exact frame rate like 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. The iPhone 12 Pro is stuck at that 60 frames per second. And as the internet does, there's controversy about whether or not 120 frames per second is needed and whether 60 frames per second is bad and they go back and forth. And in my opinion, when you're using a 60 Hertz display, you just get used to it and it looks fine, just like your computer monitor in most cases. But I have to say, the 120 Hertz ProMotion, I can see it and I do appreciate it and I prefer it over the 60 Hertz displays. I can use a 60 Hertz display, no problem. I can get used to it. However, if I have the choice, I prefer the 120 Hertz on the 15 Pro. Then on the iPhone 15 Pro, we do have that dynamic island, which shows changing information depending on what the iPhone thinks is most important to you. And I was pretty excited about the dynamic island when it came out with the iPhone 14 Pro. And in practice, I didn't use it a whole lot, which is fine. It just kind of faded into the background like it should. But when I needed it, when I wanted it, like for flight information or for an Uber or a pizza delivery, it was there and it's pretty cool. And it's nice being able to control a podcast easily or a timer right from the top. However, when viewing content full screen, the dynamic island actually is a little bit more noticeable than the notch. Either one of these you just kind of forget about after a while, but when you compare them side by side, the dynamic island is definitely more distracting than the notch. It's those little pixels on the other side of the island that make you see it more or make it more visible compared to how the notch just kind of fades into the top of the phone. Next up between these two devices is the chipset and performance. The iPhone 12 Pro has the Apple A14 chip, which comes with six gigabytes of memory and a six core CPU and four core GPU. The iPhone 15 Pro comes with an A17 Pro chip with eight gigabytes of memory, a six core CPU and a six core GPU. When we look at benchmarks using Geekbench 6, we can see that the iPhone 12 Pro gets a score of 2,065 for single core performance, and the iPhone 15 Pro gets a score of 2,952, or about 43% improvement. And that's a pretty big benchmark jump, and if we move over to multi-core, it's even bigger. The iPhone 12 Pro gets a score of 4,171, versus the 15 Pro at 7,362, for a total improvement of about 76%. And moving from CPU to graphics, the iPhone 12 Pro gets a score of 16,014 versus a score of 27,475 on the iPhone 15 Pro for about a 71% improvement. And of course, we all know that benchmarks don't really tell the full story and how the phone just feels to use. So moving between applications and opening different applications, actually, they both felt the same. I didn't feel any lag or delay in either of these devices. And actually, the 12 Pro seemed to open some applications faster than the 15 Pro. And if we move to gaming, here is the iPhone 12 Pro running Call of Duty Mobile with the highest settings. And as you can see, when I'm running through this level, I'm not having any issues with lag or slowdowns or dropped frames or anything else on the iPhone 12 Pro. Everything is smooth. I can absolutely run around the corner and get the kill or you know, somebody can get me either way. But regardless, it's not because of the performance of the iPhone 12 Pro. So in the games that I play, both of these devices actually play basically the exact same. Now, the real improvement might come to the iPhone 15 Pro later with ray tracing when it's introduced into more games. And I think that's going to be really exciting as we start to see that in more games so that the iPhone can actually power through these games using less CPU power and of course less heat, which makes the overall gaming experience even better. So overall, when it comes to regular daily usage performance between these two devices for opening apps, surfing the web, playing the games that I play, I saw basically no difference between these two devices.
But I do want to mention that when it does come to USB-C, I was actually pretty surprised that Apple did not seem to hobble or limit the USB-C on the iPhone 15 Pro. The iPhone 15 Pro is allowed to basically use the full speed of this SSD drive as seen right here with high read and write speeds. You can also use the USB-C to connect a whole bunch of different things like monitors, speakers, microphones, headphones, displays, all kinds of different things. I created a whole video showing everything I connected to the iPhone 15 Pro. If you wanna see that, it'll be in the link in the description. Now moving on to speakers, here's a quick example of the sound quality you can get from these two devices. So let me know in the comments down below which one you think sounds better. And I know what you're thinking, it's not your ears I checked. And the iPhone 12 Pro is actually a couple of dB louder than the iPhone 15 Pro. I wasn't really expecting that. Now, when it comes to battery life, you're probably going to notice a pretty big difference between these two devices, especially if your iPhone 12 Pro is a couple of years old. Now, right off the bat, Apple says that the iPhone 12 Pro can get video playback of up to 17 hours. However, the iPhone 15 Pro can get video playback of up to 23 hours. Of course, that's with both of these having brand new batteries. And again, if your iPhone 12 Pro is a couple years old, that's definitely going to be less. Now, unfortunately, I haven't spent enough time with the 15 Pro to give you my experience with it just yet, but Apple says that the battery life of the iPhone 15 Pro is the exact same as the 14 Pro. And using the iPhone 15 Pro, I can get over five and a half hours of screen on time during the day and end with my battery somewhere between five and 20%. And five and a half hours of screen time is a lot and probably pretty unhealthy but I did end most of my days with battery remaining without needing to charge during the day. So my expectation is that the iPhone 15 Pro is going to be extremely similar to the iPhone 14 Pro. If you're finding that your iPhone 12 Pro is not lasting you a full day and you have to charge constantly, it probably comes down to the lower battery in general and just aging after a couple of years. Now, when it comes to wireless inside of both of these devices, the iPhone 12 Pro has Bluetooth 5.0 and the iPhone 15 Pro has Bluetooth 5.3. Now, you're probably not going to notice a lot of difference between these two devices unless your other devices support the higher stuff, but they're usually backwards compatible. When it comes to Wi-Fi though, the iPhone 15 Pro does support the newest wireless standard, Wi-Fi 6E, and the iPhone 12 Pro supports Wi-Fi 6. I do happen to have a Wi-Fi 6E router right behind me, so I can give you a quick demonstration between the speed of these two devices talking to my internal NAS on a 10 gigabit network. So we'll just go ahead and run a connection on the 15 Pro. And the iPhone 15 Pro got an average speed of about 606 megabits per second. I've seen that higher, I've seen it lower. I've seen my MacBook get over 900 megabits per second on that 6E network. So let's see what the iPhone 12 Pro gets. And in this case, the iPhone 12 Pro got just a slightly lower speed at 576 megabits per second. So both of those are really good using a fast Wi-Fi network that I have in my house. So you're probably not really going to notice a difference in Wi-Fi on these two devices in most situations. And when it comes to LTE, both of these devices support gigabit LTE. And lastly, when it comes to ultra wideband, the iPhone 15 Pro has the second generation ultra wideband chip, and the iPhone 12 Pro has that first generation U1 ultra wideband chip for finding other devices or whatever. And looks like the 12 Pro is having issues finding a signal right now. But that allows for more precise tracking at longer distances with the iPhone 15 Pro compared to what you get with the iPhone 12 Pro. And now moving to cameras. Both the iPhone 15 Pro and 12 Pro have three lenses on the back, including a main camera lens, a zoom lens, and an ultra wide lens. Both of these iPhones have a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens on the back that is about a 30 millimeter equivalent with f2.4 on the 12 Pro and f2.2 on the 15 Pro. These give a nice big wide shot. The main camera on the 12 Pro is a 12 megapixel sensor at f1.6 that gives you a 12 megapixel image where the 15 Pro is a 48 megapixel sensor at f1.8 that gives you a 24 megapixel image. And this gives you noticeably more detail, especially when zooming in on photos. Here's a couple more examples of photos from both main sensors, the 12 Pro and the 15 Pro. 
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. These are taken how most of you will take photos. Just open up the camera and hit the shutter button. With the zoom lenses, we get a 2x zoom lens at f2.0 on the 12 Pro and a 3x lens at f2.8 on the 15 Pro, which does give you a bit more reach. The 15 Pro also allows sensor crops at three different focal lengths, allowing for different ways to frame a shot without giving up quality like you do with digital zoom. By default, you'll get the 24 millimeter equivalent on the main camera of the 15 Pro, but you can also do crop in to 28 or 35 millimeter or even 48 millimeter or 2X. So here's a 2X comparison on both iPhones using the 2X zoom lens on the iPhone 12 Pro and the 2X crop on the iPhone 15 Pro. What do you think of the results? In portrait mode, I think they actually both did a good job finding the outline of my head in this example. And in this example, you can see that the iPhone 15 Pro is sharper around the head that you actually want in focus. And comparing night mode on these two devices, here's the shot first without night mode. And here's the shot on both of the devices with night mode on. The 15 Pro also gets macro mode using the ultra wide lens, giving you a whole new view of things. I've used this for all kinds of things like trying to read text on medicine bottles or looking at bugs or a splinter in my finger and all kinds of crazy stuff. It works. I love the macro lens. The iPhone 15 also gets that next generation portrait mode where it will automatically grab depth information when you take a photo of a person or dog or cat. And then you can go back and change the focus point and aperture later in the software. And this is awesome. And you can choose whatever you want after the fact to be in focus. Now, both iPhones offer the ability to capture ProRAW, which removes some of the Apple processing and allows you a more raw image that you can actually use to manipulate in photo editors while keeping the detail. The 15 Pro allows you to shoot ProRAW in 48 megapixels or 12 megapixels or a 48 megapixel JPEG Max. And if you know what any of that means, then I'm sure you will appreciate what the iPhone 15 Pro is now offering. Overall, I think that the camera on both of these devices or cameras on both devices are good with a slight edge to the iPhone 15 Pro in detail, contrast, and color. For video, both of these phones can do 4K 60 recording and HDR and 240 frames per second slow motion at 1080p. Plus, the iPhone 15 actually gets other features, including the cinematic mode to be able to change focus and depth on video, just like you can with portrait mode on photos, and the action mode, which just does an insanely good video stabilization, as you can see in this shot of me running. And the iPhone 15 Pro gets one other feature for video over the 12 Pro, which is ProRes Log Recording for the best possible video from iPhone that allows pros to do, well, pro things. When it comes to video on the front-facing camera, this is the video on the iPhone 12 Pro. This is a 12 megapixel sensor. And what do you guys think about the video quality? And this is the front-facing camera on the iPhone 15 Pro. It's also a 12 megapixel sensor. And to my eyes, they look basically the same. The 15 Pro, however, can enjoy other features like cinematic mode or even ProRes Log from the front camera. So those are the main similarities and differences between the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro. Now, I do wanna quickly address a couple of concerns of the new iPhone 15 Pro that you've probably seen somewhere on the interwebs. The first being a heat issue. Now, I personally have not experienced a heat issue at all with the iPhone 15 Pro, the 15 Pro Max, or the regular iPhone 15 Plus. No issue whatsoever with heat. There's been reports that a lot of the issues might be software related. For example, Instagram doing background refresh is causing the iPhone to heat up way beyond the expected amount or using way too much CPU. It seems that Apple's going to be addressing this with a software update, but people have also just disabled background refresh on a number of apps, including Instagram, and the problem seems to disappear. Another weird issue that people are complaining about is fingerprints on the titanium. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, there's, probably some fingerprints on here, but here's the iPhone 12 Pro. I mean, I'll try and get a better shot of this, but there's way more fingerprints on the stainless steel of the iPhone 12 Pro, way more noticeable than it is on the titanium of the 15 Pro. Of course, if you go with the blue, you're probably gonna see more than you get on the white or natural titanium, but you know, that's just the nature of dark colored things. And the other issue that I've seen is complaints about durability of the iPhone 15 Pro, especially the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Of course, there was that video of Jerry Rig everything kind of cracking the back of his iPhone 15 Pro Max super easily. Well, you know, just don't try and bend your iPhone. And you know what? Most people are gonna throw their iPhone in a case. Might I suggest the Pitaka Mag Easy 4? By putting your iPhone in a case, you're going to get, of course, protection. You're also going to get more rigidity, keeping your iPhone from bending or cracking or whatever else. If you're somebody who goes caseless, maybe 
get Apple Care for a little bit and see how it goes. So with all of that said, you're probably wondering, should I upgrade? And there are a couple of good reasons to upgrade from the iPhone 12 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro. The first being, if you get a great deal with your carrier, why not? If you can trade in your iPhone 12 Pro to get an iPhone 15 Pro for free or extremely cheap, it's kind of a no brainer. You get a better, newer device for very little money. Plus, if you're having any issues with battery life on your iPhone 12 Pro, that will probably take care of that issue. For me, the biggest reason to upgrade every year is the camera system. I get one shot to take photos of my daughter when she's doing something weird or funny, and I want that shot to be as good as it can be while still fitting in my pocket. So I want the biggest, best, newest camera that I can get. And for me, that's enough to upgrade from a 12 to a 15 Pro or 13 Pro or 14 Pro all the way up to a 15 Pro or especially anything older than the 12 Pro. But if you're not having any issues with battery life on your current iPhone and your performance isn't suffering at all, you're still able to do the things you do, and maybe you don't care about having the latest and greatest camera, then there's really no reason at all to upgrade from the 12 Pro to the 15 Pro. And even if battery life is an issue you're having on the 12 Pro, but the performance is still good and everything else is okay or enough for you, maybe just consider replacing the battery and going ahead another two or three years with the iPhone 12 Pro. But because the regular daily performance of these two devices was so similar, I don't really see a need for many people to upgrade. Then there's USB-C. And if you think you need to upgrade for USB-C, you probably don't. Yes, you can connect more things to USB-C. You can connect external drives and microphones and webcams and all kinds of different things, but are you really going to? No, probably not. So with the performance being as close as it is between these two devices, there's probably not a lot of reason to upgrade from the 12 Pro to the 15 Pro. But what do you guys think? Are you currently using an iPhone 12 Pro and having issues or wanting to upgrade to an iPhone 15 Pro? Let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see my comparison comparing the iPhone 15 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.